Voilà, chat rooms on. And welcome to the chat room. Now, there's a growing controversy in South Africa around sexual education and distribution of condoms in public schools. Many parents worry that sex education and condom availability encourage increased teenage sex, but studies repeatedly demonstrate that teenagers are already having sex at a younger age without protection from pregnancy and disease. Some opponents of condom availability programs argue that these programs violate the right of parents to educate their children about moral behavior and religious values. Some have questioned whether making condoms available should be the job of the school. They argue that schools should be a place for learning and not a place where they are taught how to put on a condom. But public high schools might be the best place to provide sex education and make condoms available to teenagers. That's where the teenagers are and that's where they spend most of their time. In this country, young people do not like the idea of going to the local clinics for their birth control matters because they feel judged by the society for being sexually active at a young age. According to official estimates, 90,000 schoolgirls were pregnant last year and maybe the number would have gone lower should the condoms have been readily available to them. So Namtlanje, we ask, should condoms be distributed in high schools? Well, before we start this discussion, let's take a look at this insert. Chat rooms on. Let's chat about a start. I think condoms should not be distributed to high schools. No, I don't think I'm a condoms should be distributed equally, especially high schools. Because mainly it seems like you're giving them the right to have sex. And yeah, I think you should first maybe teach them. Well, I'm all for it because it's kind of like in the youth of today, it's inevitable. Yes, we agree that condoms, condoms should, should be, be distributed, distributed in high, high schools. schools. Um, I'm against the distribution of condoms. Because they're doing it anyway, so it's better to tell them to protect themselves than to be ignorant and say they shouldn't have sex at all when they actually are having sex. So I really think it's a good thing. It should be done because it's happening everywhere these days. At a, at a uh, young age, it's, it's like wrong to have sex at like a young age because there's consequences and if you're a child and you have sex um, and you get pregnant what are you going to do bring a child in the world and you're a child as well it doesn't make sense okay i think condoms should not be distributed at school because they give the kids an initiative that they should continue with sex it's a bad thing because other students use those condoms at school yeah the distribution of condoms at our school as i think is very very important as you see now uh, the illnesses, all this, like, we need them. I'm um, for condom distribution in high school. Kids in high school, we get taught about sex, having sex, we get taught about HIV. It's, it's sending a positive message to our youth that they must be safe when and if they choose to be sexually active. Chat rooms on. Let's chat about a start. When we return, we have a debate with high school students and we also have our experts joining us. We'll be right back. The debate is always good. Let's chat about a start. Voila, chat room's on. And welcome to the chat room. Recent statistics suggest that a higher number of teenage girls than boys are HIV positive. But is this justification enough to have condoms in schools where most teenagers spend their time? Or are we giving teenagers the right to engage in sexual activity when we give them easier access to condoms? Joining us in the studio, we have Unogutula Moilwa, as well as Umu Samakhalimela, who are advocating that condoms should be distributed in schools. On the other side, arguing a different debate is Ukift Mavundla and Uachisang Disimelo. Uh, let's open up the floor. Welcome to the chat room. 
Thank you. Right, I'm going to start on this side uh, with you, Nogutula, giving you 30 seconds to give us an opening argument as to why you are advocating that condoms should be distributed in schools. So, Nogutula, your 30 seconds starts now. A wise man, Erasmus, once said, prevention is better than cure. Therefore, implementing condoms are being distributed in high schools will then prevent the further consequences that we are facing right now. Previous measures that are being taken have proven not to be working. Therefore, why don't we try something else which is new? Why don't we provide high schools with condoms and see if there will be a decrement in the teenage pregnancy and the rampant rise of HIV and AIDS in, within teenagers? Yes, sorry. Thank you. Gift, your 30 seconds starts now. Okay. Before we address, we have to address the consequences. All of our schools are places filled with opportunities, with learners who want to bright the future, not an institution which will teach us how to engage in sexual activities or not an institution that will expose us to private stuff of which not even our parents can tell us. Mm, thank you. Can I have another response from you, um, Musa? Okay. Basically what we need to understand is that sex is a problem already. Children are having sex without their parents' consent, even without the elders knowing. So whatever we try to do, we can never stop them from doing it. So by distributing condoms, you're saying you can have sex, we know you have sex, but we cannot stop you. But we have a much more mm. safer way of doing it. So we're not in any way condoning sexual intercourse. These are the people who are having sex already. I mean, you're not going to make a choice because you see a condom and you're going to start thinking about, about about having sex eventually. I mean, it's something you've decided long, long upon to say that I want to have sex at a certain age or even I've started engaging in sex. So basically providing condoms is saying, this is happening, so what do we, what do, we do to solve it? We don't want a pandemic where people are gonna start getting sick all over again. We don't have a future where we have properly, um, I mean, healthy uh, citizens to actually run this country. So we need to make sure that we understand that sex is going to happen whether we want it or not. Thank you. And your response, Akhisana? Well, schools are meant to teach students, whether it be about history, math, or any other subject. Well, this, the school's um, purpose is to teach students about the real life or the next step, which is your university. Now, with that being said, schools offer um, um, a new range of what to expect, of what is expected for you in the real life. Now, contraceptives should not be distributed, but rather the full education and the full background on those contraceptives. Like they say, it is a school, not a public clinic. Thank you very much for that. So also joining us in studio, we have Upasta M. Msia, as well as Ulebukhang Bailani, who is a peer counsellor at Treatment Action Campaign. We are also joined by Mr. Joy Maila from the Department of Health, as well as Umis Gugundemele from the Department of Education. Welcome to the chat room. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. I want to bring it to you, Sis Gugu, um, in response uh, to the debate uh, that has just happened now. Mm. I want to ask the question, who is responsible um, for distributing uh, condoms in schools? The reality is that more and more of our young people are engaging in sexual activity. Mm. The issue is whether the solution is the condom in the school. The other reality is that schools are not homogeneous. Mm. In the school, you have Christians, You've got people who, do, you know, people who've got different value systems. So our policy says that decision on whether you distribute or not must be schools-based. Mm. So the SGB, the school governing body in the school, taking into consideration the views of the young people, the views of the parents, because these young people articulate as they are sent by their parents to school, the views of the community and all the values that inform the school can then make a decision. That doesn't mean that you don't teach young people about sexual and reproductive mm. health. In fact, our curriculum addresses mm. sexual and reproductive health through the curriculum and through other programs that are extracurricular. Why is it that the Department of Health wants to distribute condoms in schools? Well, you know that, um, as uh, Ms. Gugu has said, that we are not necessarily saying that um, uh, we are going to line up children and give them condoms every day they come to school, that they are going to disturb their learning. We are just saying that these things must be made available mm -hmm. so that when um, a, 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 a child comes, there are children who have, child, who have kids already, they come to you and say, I've got a problem. I'm already involved in sexual activities. Mm -hmm. Help me. What do we do? Because there are two problems. You don't only have a problem of um, a teenage pregnancy because that's one thing that we really want to talk about uh, because the, 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 the timing goes big. Mm. 
there is also a problem of HIV and AIDS. There is a problem of, while you said that there are 90,000 people in one year who, who got pregnant, we know from the Department of Health, for instance, that in, very, in that very year, 77,000 young people came to our facilities to, to do abortion. And I'm not talking about the numbers, which may be very serious, of people who did backstreet abortions. Mm. So we have that kind of a problem. We need to look at it in a manner that as all of us as society, what is it that we can do to make sure that we prevent? Yeah. Pastor Sia, clearly uh, the Department of Health is, is uh, finding solutions to a problem that we already have in our schools and amongst our teenagers. Uh, is there anything really wrong? Because uh, statistics have shown us that things are out of hand. Girls, 77,000 girls went for abortions. 99,000 fell pregnant uh, in the last year alone. So surely they are taking precautions because ignoring the fact that uh, these young people are having sex uh, would not be helping the, the situation either. What is your response to that? So Sarah, we look at the reason why these kids are engaging in sex in the first place. And my take would be that in most of these cases, we find there is an instability and imbalance from back home. Mm. Most of the kids that will be brave enough to go take a condom in a public place are not the kids that are dumb or that are, let me say, that will just fall pregnant. But the kids that are coming from depression, depression environment, kids that have low self-esteem are the ones that are going to get pregnant and are the ones that are never going to be brave enough to go take a condom. Mm -hmm. Now, that means we are not necessarily looking at the problem. But when wouldn't we, you say that they're still the same ones that are still going to have sex? Good. What, what now we are doing, we are leaving the whole bag full of problems going to the end to just sort of close down the pregnancy and the, and the health part of it. So what should my, be done? My, pr my, my problem is that with that being done, we are eradicating the, 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 the question of, 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 of consequences. We are eradicating responsibility. We are eradicating accountability. When we grew up, we didn't have anyone displaying condoms to us. Mm -hmm. And we knew there were consequences for everything that you do. Because of the weight of the consequences, we have learned to take the right choices. Mm -hmm. When we don't put that in place, we just have been helping them through their teenage years. How are they able to take good, sound decisions when they are adults? Lebukhang, what is your response to that? Uh, Pastor is saying that we are now eradicating responsibility, etc. whereas when we were growing up, we didn't have condoms really readily available for us, and therefore we were able to exercise self-control with regards to sex. You work with a lot of young people with the, um, uh, in the community. What would your response be based on that, on his statement? I believe that um, um, distributing condoms in schools, it's, it's not encouraging sex per se. However, it's not a stand alone. It should be accompanied by um, proper sex education. Mm. So sex and sexuality, I mean, keeping quiet about these issues will, will only um, increase the, the, the effect of us being infected with HIV and, and, and sex abuse in schools. Mm. Pastor, you just raised your eyebrows as soon as Lebo Khang said that. Why? Number one, as a pastor, I will safely say the first role of a parent is to make sure your child has some faith belonging, has a faith that governs their values, number one. Number two, as a parent, you need to, if, 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 if I think the government right now promotes uh, us being open about stuff, and I think umdanako, umdanako, and at the end of the day, you can't expect Wonka Banyabandu and the minister to be trying to solve your problems when you yourself, my brother said, you're talking about stuff our parents aren't unconfident talking to us about. So Abba Zalibona, they should step up and start talking to these children. And like a pastor, I would like to say, I do think that the church as a, as a whole has failed the community in the sense that I don't think we have been forward enough as a church to say, we are talking to these kids because the church has the ability to speak to their soul, but also to their intellect. And that is what the church has to do. Right, I'm going to try and get comments before I go for a quick ad break based on that. Uh, can you respond to everything that you've heard, uh, Noktula? What is your opinion? Has it changed um, at all? From, from everything that I've heard, 
I hear them talking about the past, but then the past has gone. We're living today and we must focus on the future. And then we shouldn't be hiding our head on the sands, under the sands, and we should face reality. And then the reality is teenagers are sexually active at a high and a high rate. And then all the implementation all the, all the other methods have been implemented. They are providing condoms in public toilets, in libraries, and all other places. But then there are other people who feel embarrassed to go and get a condoms in a public place because they feel that other people will see them and then say bad about them behind their back. Therefore, it is better to provide them at the school where they are more comfortable. This is their comfort zone. They spend most of their time in the school premises. Therefore, around their peers, they can do something which others around them are doing and be comfortable in it. And providing condoms is not um, condoning them to have sex. It has nothing to do with them disrespecting what their parents have taught them. But then it is, it is, an, it is a way to ensure safe sex. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, can I have a response from this side before I go for an ad break? Condoms, are they at a school whereby it is a classroom or a public toilet whereby it will be a distraction? We know that a condom, it is used for intercourse, which is it's, it's a main input in, 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 into that issue, whereby it will be a distraction. Most learners do not know the use and the, and the, and the repercussions of a condom, just like um, Pastor said, um, I don't know which one of them. Pastor. Yes, Pastor said that we're blowing a balloon oh, out of it. Exactly, so we need the theory before the practical. Okay, well, this discussion continues after the break. We'll be right back. The debate is always good. Let's chat about a start. Voila, chat room's on. Welcome back to the chat room. We're going to conclude the debate of whether condoms should be distributed in schools. The children's rights groups do not support the proposed distribution of condoms in high schools because they view it as encouragement for the young people to engage in sexual activity. But the young people are saying this will save them from sexually transmitted diseases. Let's continue. Um, let's try and find, I think both arguments uh, for as long as there is the idea or the plan to have condoms ready to be available in schools will stand. Um, can we try and find a way in which we can, I don't know if it's possible to even merge the two, but find a, a solution in which will help young people uh, in schools based on the fact that young people, the reality is that they are having sex at a young age they are falling pregnant, etc. However, it's important to instill those moral values and bring in a sense of responsibility and self-control. In conclusion, I just want to make a point that uh, we are not necessarily saying that we're going to bring a truck with loads of condoms and throw them at the gate of the school. That's not what we're going to do. We are just saying that people must have a... These things must be made available so that when people make those choices that we've been talking about, they should not make a choice to use a condom only to find that there's nowhere to be found. And that is another problem. Mam Kuku, your closing comment going forward in terms of this matter? My, my closing comment is in two ways. The first one is that the solution is empowered, knowledgeable um, young people who are informed and know where they want to go and therefore make the right choices that will get them to where they want to go. And the information they get cuts across. You know, So our role as adults is to make that information available. Because even though they are knowledgeable, it doesn't necessarily mean that they know the right things. Mm. So there's still a role for the parent. There's still a role for the teacher um, to, to, to intervene. The second thing is that a friend of mine said to me that, you know, Kuku, when I want petrol, I go to a petrol station. When I want to buy bread, I go to a bakery or a shop. You know, so when I, when, I, when I want condoms, I want to go to a health facility. Mm. So the challenge for me is that when we don't solve the problems of nurses that are not friendly, etc., we say, as the department has started, let's have youth-friendly centers mm. that will be staffed with young people that engage with young people. And there are various centers of this nature that the Department of Health is introducing mm. so that it's easier for young people to go to those centers, and those centers become a place where people like these young ladies and these students can talk about what these decisions mean sure. and what this information sure. is. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Fundis, your closing comment? My closing comment, Sarah, is that number one, I have a feeling, you know, 
ever since Mshaba Wakala, people have been trying to sabotage the title. And the, the, guy that, the guy that came with the idea of condom was just a guy trying to sabotage the title from dishing out his punishments to people that engage in sex, because sex is for married people. And when people engage in it, they should get what's coming to them, you know? Now, was to remove the punishment. Because now, Singa Bazali, we expected to kill Sabandu and Singa's rights. So, Munanja, Jambo Society, if you now party picture, and the Benzo must party picture, Yom Fana, or Betwang, and Fubo, and Fa, Bonagalba, Umdu, or engage with Sex Apekai, Uzo Banji, my Betty way. And I think it would help. Okay, thank you very much for that and thank you for your contribution. I'm going to get final closing comments uh, from both sides, starting with you, Gift. Okay, now, what we have to understand is that the future of South Africa depends on us, on us as the young people. And these young people are fully based in schools, of course. Therefore, yes, information needs to be provided to us at a very young age, because if we do have acts which open up ways for 12-year-olds, then we need to have the necessary information at an early age. Then they, they have to tell us where to get these condoms, not to give them to us, because in everything that we need in life, there's a certain place that we need to go get, because if, the, if, the, if there's easy access, it means that we have easy exposure. Therefore, we have easy results, which leads to a negative detriment, of course. So in closing, we just say, yes, we do need the information, but now we do not need them in our school. It's fine, provide, but not in our schools. Thank you. Okay. Uh, your closing comment? OK, basically, I have like three attached solutions. But may, may, the main one, I believe, is sh we should encourage society, society to open up. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that if we're going to have a society that's going to to, um, try to actually divide uh, the people, like have the demographics of the young people on one side and the adults saying we don't want this and then this is happening. The reality is that we're going to, uh, the wrong information is going to be spread out. So I believe as society, if we can open up and come together and try to talk about this situation, whether Ugoko or Mama, we need to come together and try to actually talk about this. But also a conversion towards um, how we see the, the youth of South Africa. I believe not everybody is engaging in sex. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a young person too, but I'm not actively uh, actually sexual active so in that way if we look at the solution of youth for youth where we find youth like um, me and other people out there with the youth that we feel is engaging too much in sex and empower each other in that way we can have a much more empowered youth as mama was saying so in that way I believe condoms should not be stopped um, should not uh, we should distribute condoms altogether but I believe that Another thing that we should do, we should always make sure that we try to make sure that when they have sex, they have the best safety that we can actually give them as a government. Because we cannot even try to curb whether they have sex or not. But when, when they do, then they will have uh, the resources to actually do it safely. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. They have spoken. Now the question is, when Angela Pekaya, what is your stand? Do you think that condoms should be distributed in schools? That's all we have time for today on the chat room. Join us again for more thought-provoking chat. Remember, you can speak to us. This discussion continues on our social platforms, especially on Google+. So, Bonana Fute, Virginia Lendelayo from me, Osara Tabeta, and the rest of the chat room team, goodbye and God bless. Mm -hmm.